Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Pioneer and why it solves the problem of cheating in Magic. The number one cheat in Magic is to use your fetch land to look for a card and put it on the top of your deck, which is what this guy's doing. Now, this cheat is so effective because even thought seizing somebody is not going to help. Because when the thought seized hits, the card that this guy really wants is Geist. When the thought seized hits, Geist is not in the hand, so there's no way for the opponent to interact. One of the reasons Thought Seas has been going up so much in price, it's one of the leading price leaders, is because people won't be able to cheat against it. Thought Seas has no value, um, absolutely no value, if, as you can see from the guy with the lion green, what he's going to do is he's going to crack a fetch land, tutor for a card, put on top of his library, distract his opponent, oh, there we go. There's the Geist. Got ya. And the opponent actually in the audio says, Oh, hey, that was the card I was looking for. Good draw. So even though the opponent has all the information, there's no way for him to stop this behavior. Just none. Like a fetch land vampiric tutor at your opponent's end step with some type of distraction... And you can see that the guy in the lime green is really trying to distract the guy in the regular green by making conversation and saying, oh, I got lucky. And fetch lands are the bane. I'm so glad that they are banned in Pioneer. A, they make the game a lot more clunky and slower. I mean, if you imagine the amount of time that you spend shuffling in modern, and now it's pretty much gone. I mean, yes, you could play Evolving Wilds, but at that point... Am I really worried about my opponent cheating playing Evolving Wilds? Probably not, because the whole point of playing the fetch land is you get the land either on in untapped when you want it untapped, tapped when it does. That has a immense amount of utility. There's no way, however, to beat an opponent who is fetching his victory from his deck, because there's no interaction. You cannot. Maybe you can mill him. But that wouldn't really stop him, right? He would just continue. He would just fetch before you could mill. Or he, I guess he would fetch after you mill. And then draw into that card. And that's the beauty of this the fetch land cheat. I've seen it done many times. I've even seen fetch lands where you add the card to your hand directly. And it's like, okay. That's pretty. You take the bottom card and you just slip it into your you know hand. Because you put your hand down. So it's just an extra card. There's just no way to interact with this fetch land cheat. There's no way to... And it's very difficult to catch it. And I can tell you it's very difficult to catch it because it has been the most abused cheat on camera. So if cheaters are willing to cheat on camera using this tactic, uh, imagine... Uh, just imagine what they would be willing to do when they're not on camera. Like I, I said, it's kind of like, okay, so you robbed a bank... And they filmed you robbing said bank. Okay. Why would you not rob a... If, if the bank somehow did not have cameras, would you still rob a bank? If you were able to rob... If you were willing to, with no mask, enter a bank and get caught. Yeah, of course. The same with magic cheating. If you cheat on camera... Oh, but it's the only time I've ever cheated. Well, it's very inconvenient to you that it was on camera. However, I don't believe you. The problem with fetch lands, very boring interaction. I don't like the time that we spend shuffling the deck. Um, I, I really don't think it's a good idea to do that over and over again. Like, oh, fetch land. Oh, now I'm going to shuffle. Oh, you shuffle. Oh, I'm going to shuffle. And then the cheating on fetch lands is ridiculous. The reason that there is so much cheating, as I mentioned before, is because of the fetch lands. It's not just the tutoring ability. People add cards to their hand. People slide things to, from their graveyard. And there's just land. The fact that there's activity happening every single turn is hard to track. 
Now, if land just played out as regular land and no one was searching their libraries and manipulating decks, so if, if people are not searching libraries all the time, uh, there's no reason for your opponent to cut your deck uh, in the anti fetch land. I guess there's a way to attack your opponent if they have fetch lands. It would be to stack their deck, right? And that's what people do because when you fetch, you have to shuffle your deck and give it to your opponent. Your opponent could be really smart, like uh, Jared Buccelli, would, who was one of the most famous Magic players. He would do this. He would stack your deck with either too much land or too little land, depending on what he thinks is best. Uh, when it comes down to cheating, Magic the Gathering is the number one reason that people... Fetch lands and Magic the Gathering is the number one reason people cheat, because it gives them the ability to manipulate different decks. Manipulate your opponent's deck if they're fetching, or manipulate your own deck when you're fetching. I never really liked fetch lands. Um, I didn't when they first came out in onslaught. Yes, they were played as four elves because they were very good even back then without shock lands and so on. Just it makes the game a lot less enjoyable in my opinion. It, the game is slower. Um, it is something kind of out of nightmare because you're playing a card game here. And the majority of your time is spent shuffling each other's decks. That does not seem like that fun to me. So that mechanic, the mechanic of forcing... Okay, so let's... Worst case scenario, this is what's going to happen. I fetch, you go, you put a fetch, I fetch at the end of your turn, I shuffle my deck, I give my deck to you, you're a smart opponent, you shuffle my deck, and you give the deck back to me. And then I... I play another fetch and a pass the turn you fetch at the end of my turn and then we continue this cycle if you were a non-magic player would you think this is like exciting would you be like oh wow what an exciting move no you would be like what the blank is happening here like there's <laughs> a it would be hard for a new magic player to understand the value some Magic players who've been playing this game for a long time still don't understand the value of fetch lands. Like in a mono red deck, for instance, I play fetch lands in it. It's so I actually don't want that many lands. So if I can reduce the chance of me getting a land, that's actually very good in that type of deck. So if I have uh, a mountain and a fetch land, that's good because all I really need is two red. And if I have 19 land and one of them is a fetch land and i grab a land it's un it's more unlikely that i draw land right so that's why you play fetch lands in mono red and the life doesn't really matter to you at all and you're just looking for mountains and maybe you splash for something maybe you splash for lightning helix or something like that i don't know it gives you a little bit of uh variance it gives you a little bit more stability uh, in terms of your land base because you can add more to 19 now you, because you're not too worried about getting mana flooded because your fetch lands will be a two for one. And of course, they have the ability to interact with something like Deathrite Shaman. That's why Deathrite Shaman was banned because fetch lands made it just way too powerful. In my opinion, Pioneer made the perfect choice of getting rid of fetch lands. Um, it is really something that has been plaguing modern. And that's why I would say modern, once we have this new Pioneer format, which is supported by Wizard of the Coast, and I would imagine that the stores in Wizard of the Coast would support Pioneer more than modern, mainly because the stores have more boxes to sell. And the newest set, which is the one that makes Wizard of the Coast all its money, yeah, Modern Horizons, kind of nice, but not really a moneymaker as compared to a standard set will be promoted it will be more powerful rtr beyond is not as power i mean obviously the more sets you add the more of a card pool you have and the more diluted your new set becomes but throne of the elder end has no cards that can compete maybe the gilded goose and oka it just cannot compete against the old school of new frack and that's why you see so many bannings right getaxian probe and I like it. I like the format. Just ban me five fetch lands. Figure out what decks need to be banned. And the crazy part about this, it will be so obvious. There probably will be one or two decks that are overly powerful, just like in any format. 
and then those decks will have cards banned, and then new decks will come, just like modern. Like, people are like, oh, this will be a no ban. No, no, the cards will be banned. I'm almost certain of that fact, because when has a format not had cards being banned? Uh, it's so obvious that they just want to wait to see what the best deck is, and then what, whatever the best deck comes out to be, they will ban that deck. So when it comes down to cheating and Magic the Gathering, Pioneer solves the fetch lands are the not all of the problem, right? Because you still have cards in lap, cards in sleeve, cards on your head, cards in your sideboard. Still many ways to cheat. But the number one way people have cheated is by using fetch lands to distract their opponents and either have you know stack cards on top. It's such a beautiful mechanic if you think about it, because Fetch, end of your turn, shuffle my deck, distract you with some, you know, oh, you're amazing, and wow, how was your day today? And then my next turn, I draw draw the card I just tutored for. The one, in this case, it would be the Geist of St. Traff that can win the game, right? Oh, got ya. So, number one, no shuffling. So that's great. I hate shuffling with fetch lands. So maybe we won't have as many marked cards or sleeves. And we will say, oh, well, you know, I shuffled this brand, like you, your Watanabe, this brand new. Well, he was playing Tron, so I don't know how much shuffling he was doing. But theoretically, there would be less marking of cards this way. And the sleeves would be in better condition because you're not shuffling as much. Guys, the nightmare, like if you were new to magic, play fetch land, go. You play fetch land, go. Crack my fetch land, end of your turn, shuffle, shuffle. Can my deck to you, you shuffle, shuffle. Okay, good. Oh, end of your turn? Okay, I'm going to do the same. My gosh, that's boring as blank. <laughs> like, you know, from my st- I know why people are doing this because it gives them like that advantage and that edge. And fetch lands are great cards, but... They're very boring to like interact with. And when people are cheating like crazy on them, there's just nothing you can do. Really nothing you can do. Anyway, hi guys.